it's time for world domination hello guys and welcome to total war warhammer 3 today we're going to be starting a new immortal empires campaign going for world domination with none other than the vampire counts the vampire counts is one of my favorite factions in warhammer fantasy and i have in fact done an entire world domination in the past with vlad von karstein we took him through the world in Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires, but that was before any of the Vampire Count reworks. They actually introduced them like halfway through the campaign and then they didn't work retroactively, so I never actually got to try them out. So this time around, I'm going to have all the fun with the blood kisses. We've got uh, the changes that have been made to the individual Vampire Count's factions, so that's cool. But this time around, instead of using Vlad, we're going to be using his lovely wife, Isabella. She's going to be putting on the trousers, taking control in her relationship, and she will be leading us to world domination. So, hero capacity plus three for vampires. She does start with Vlad as a legendary hero, so we will keep him alongside her. We have weapon strength plus 25% for embedded vampire heroes. Her lord effects. Uh, she has an increased healing cap when in an army with Vlad, which is the reason we're going to keep them together. And then we have the plus 10 melee attack and plus 10 melee defense for the vampire heroes in her army. We're definitely going to make good use of that. In terms of our settings, we're going to keep it on very hard, very hard. Not a huge fan of legendary difficulty on campaign. Battle difficulty is still the highest, though. And then we have the endgame scenarios on the default settings, pretty much every single one can trigger i think except the vampiric ascension because we are playing with, with the vampires we're going to keep the battle time limit on the 60 minutes instead of unlimited just so that any bugs occur the battles can still end so there we go let's jump on in the world will drown in blood. so we arrive on the campaign map this is, of course, the Immortal Empires beta, which means that there may be crashes and other bugs that you may experience throughout the campaign. Just bear that in mind. Just a little heads up. Another thing that I wanted to mention before we start is that I will be cutting out a lot of like the loads because the loading time in Warhammer 3 is sometimes pretty long. And also, it just makes the viewing experience a lot better. Previously, I used to keep the loading times in because it kind of confirmed that I wasn't like reloading the battles if I if I lost them. I guess that was my theory. But at the end of the day, I'm not exactly going for hardest difficulty playthrough to the max. Like I I play to have fun. That's that's how I play. I will make thematic armies, and we will rule the world. Uh, as quickly as I can. That's pretty much my only goal. Uh, so yeah, it also helps if a game crashes, I can just reload at the battle rather than reloading from the start of the save again, which has happened in the past, particularly with the Warhammer 3 normal campaigns, in fact. Anyway, that's all said and done. Let's get on with our campaign. So of course, Isabella does give her bonuses to vampires so we might as well put the verse vampire into her army we also have here vlad von karstein who is a hero not a lord uh, when you play as isabella so we have pretty much everything that he would normally have already unlocked and then he has his unique skill tree here since he is a legendary hero. So we can still get the Covenant of Undeath, we can get the Mesmerizing Aura, the Mortal Levies, the Storm of the Night, and the Monstrous Strength. So all of those buffs, particularly the base weapon damage and weapon strength here with the Sundering Attacks, that is going to be applied to his own army, which will be Isabella's army. Uh, so that's going to be really, really awesome. Let's get him in there. Very well. With that done, done, we can already... Raise Dead, so we're going to be doing that. Raise Dead pool has changed since I last played with the Vampire Counts. Instead of it being based on a total amount of death in the province, it's based on a percentage chance of replenishing the pool. Uh, so that is, again, based on how many people are dead, but overall uh, it just means that we have less of a guarantee of certain units. It's more based on chance. 
So it definitely varies what you can get a hand on. Anyway, with that done, I added another fell back there. We're going to go ahead and attack this fella. It is going to be a close victory. I don't believe so. Let's jump on in. So the main thing that we're going to be doing is just charging forwards with Vlad and the Vampire and also Isabella, of course. And we'll just go and kill them with those three heroes. Shouldn't take that long to do. We can also bring our Vargolf along. He should be strong enough. And also I can use my Black Coach to cycle charge once they get involved. And here we are. The start of Warhammer 3 World Domination. Vlad, Isabella, their mistress. Let's go ahead and speed it up. The Lord's probably going to be standing in cover over here. We'll just make sure to attack him first and kill him off. So they're going to be starting to surround us. With that done, we can then start moving in our other units. Just to help speed up the process. I'll have my black coach go through the zombies so that it can get its kills because the black coach it requires kills in order to get its abilities so it gets the black size when it gets more than 40 kills which in, which gives it flaming attacks and armor piercing weapon damage we get the vigor per second at 80 kills and then the black nimbus which is a plus 40 percent damage resistance at 120 kills so he'll probably be quite happy, actually, just staying in the middle of those zombies. I could also have my bar guys get involved. Are we going to spirit leech this chap? We'll get Isabella healed up. And we'll make sure they're all attacking him there. Blood ain't happy about Isabella getting hurt. Gonna be slapping him up. Vargas gonna be really good at just cleaning up the chaff here. Just always gonna have one heal the other. So Isabella. We'll make heal Vlad, and we'll have Vlad heal Isabella. That's the only way they're allowed to heal each other. Unless it's an AoE heal, in which case I can't really help it. Alright, time for you to give the spell back, Vlad. There you go. Lovely. Once we get enough wins, we'll use another Spirit Leech on this guy. So this is probably what a lot of the gameplay is actually going to look like. All of our lords in here trying their best to succeed. Once the lord goes down though, things will probably end pretty fast. Now, Isabella will be probably the weakest lord and hero in our army because she doesn't get any of her own buffs. We're going to have to make sure she gets some pretty good gear. But since we've more or less got things done, let's let the fell bats come in and chew everyone's faces off. Get Vlad to heal Isabella. Vampire. Lovely. That doesn't matter, <laughs> really, if we do it either way, but thematic. We're going to keep things thematic throughout this campaign. Really explore the love between Vlad and Isabella. Did pretty well there. Let's 
take the magic. Thank you very much. And from this, we can now move on to Eshin. So that will be the first settlement we take. I'm going to click the rest is dead so we get the extra campaign map movement range. And this is technically a decisive victory, so I will auto resolve it. And we will occupy Eshin. But we do start with uh, Castle Drakenhof. We also start with Schwarzhafen as Sylvania. Previously, when you were playing as a vampire count, you started with Vlad. You would start at Schwarzhafen only, and then Manfred would be here. But I believe Manfred moved to the desert in the south, in the Southlands. So that's where he starts now. We do have 6,066 to spend, but let's first of all level up our heroes once again. This Children of the Night is actually really nice now. Look at that. 10% experience gained for heroes and lords in the army and the minus upkeep on top of it. Would also be nice to get a point in Invocation of Nehek so we can overcast it to get AoE healing. And the hunger for the regeneration would also be nice. But I think what we're going to do first is max out Children of the Night because then we get that character experience gain as quickly as possible. Let's have a look at Castle Drakenhof. So in Castle Drakenhof, we should have some unique buildings. Yeah, we've got two here. The Mausoleum of the Mad Count. And then we also have the Von Karstein Court Hall, which is very nice. And we will build that eventually. Uh, this gives us plus two control faction wide, plus two Lord Recruit rank faction wide, plus one Vampiric Corruption faction wide, and also the plus two Recruit rank for Vampires faction wide. Uh, the Mausoleum unlocks Hero Recruitment for Vampires. And also hero capacity gives us hero recruit rank for, for vampires and minus 70% recruitment cost. So I am going to pick that up early on because we will want to be adding vampires to Isabella's army sooner than later. I am going to keep the barrow here because it can only go up to level 3. And we will keep the sinister cops here because this can go up to level 4 in order to unlock the Vargolf. Uh, we can now also get Mongols by the looks of things. That's awesome. As the vampire counts. They were originally just a vampire coast unit. But it looks like we can get them for ourselves now. Any other surprises here? Looks like most of the other units are generally the same. Okay. That's fine. I might as well put the other bit of cash into upgrading castle Drakenhof because I don't believe we can recruit any heroes just yet so we will be moving on to Waldenhof we'll take that and then we'll move down to castle Templehof with Melissa we'll definitely just want to go for replenish troops initially to make sure that we can replenish faster and for Vlad I'm going to go for the training sooner than later so that we can just start leveling up some of our units in our army. Although the majority of the army uh, will be vampires most likely. So in Southern Sylvania we have got a commandment to use. We'll do the growth and construction cost reduction as that will allow us to develop the place a lot quicker. And we also now have technology. The technology here is pretty standard, same as before, I believe. But I think they removed the minus 100% upkeep for skeleton warriors because people were just spamming those stacks too much. So we can no longer get that. This is all upgrades for zombies, skeleton spearmen, skeleton warriors, and then eventually grave guards and black knights. This is for Crypt Ghouls and Crypt Horrors, as well as some extra for Hex Race and Mongols and Can Race as well. We have this one, which is good for all of the beasts by the looks of things, the Fell Bats, the Dire Wolves, the Vargeists, Vargolfs, and the Terrorgeists. This one, I assume, is just for everything, although we can get Extra melee attack and melee defense for blood knights there. But just in general looks like mostly 
income and also dip diplomatic stuff. Okay, I think what we're going to do first is we'll go for the Direwolves and Felbats because I believe, if I remember correctly, that Isabella can buff those as well. Yeah, she gets the Direwolf, Felbat, Vargolf, Vargeist, Terrorgeist buffs, leadership and melee attack plus eight. Uh, she can also, oh, that's nice, the extra armor piercing for Direwolves and Felbats with the hunger ability for Direwolves and Felbats as well. That's really good. Uh, then we have also, let's see, any others? Time of Arising, yeah, extra speed for Direwolves, Felbats, Vargolfs, Vargais, and Terrorgeist with a passive ability Wayfarer, okay, which increases and de uh, increases acceleration by 200% and deceleration by 200% with also give, giving them the strider trait. That's really nice. Okay, yeah, so 100% going for the Felbats. Uh, we will take this turn to recruit some more. And that should be everything done for our first turn, unless there's some dipl diplomatic stuff we can do. Either of these like us enough for a trade agreement? No. No one else likes us. Brilliant. Okay. Perfect setup for a world domination. Let's go. We'll be moving through the turns relatively quickly originally, I think. Unless Castle Tempelhof, or like the Tempelhof guys over here, uh, start putting out some big armies. 272 factions on the end turn. That is a lot. They actually end up moving their army to Waldenhof, so I don't think they recruited. That's really good for us. And in the raised Deadpool, we now have some Direwolves. And there's now a percentage. You can see that we can get Ken, Ray's Grave Guard, Grip, uh, and the Crypt Ghouls there. So we'll add them to our army. Anything else that I want? I don't think so. Let's take Waldenhof. So it should be pretty simple battle. I don't obviously want to take the Pyrrhic victory, so let's jump on in. Against Zillig Van Kruger. Time to take out Zillig. Let's grab our heroes together again. We'll keep everything else pretty much out of the settlement. I might use the fell bats to take down any towers that pop up. But other than that, we're just going to ball up the enemies again, I assume. By charging in. We could actually take out the enemy fell bats. Let's do that with our fell bats. That should be a lot better. I'll also have my Vargolf join the heroes as they push forwards. It fast forwarded. Here it goes. Fell bat on fell bat action. We do have the blood and gore pack activated. So these fell bats are going to start getting covered very quickly as they tear each other apart. Also, now got the Vargeist getting involved. They're going to really demolish these fell bats and you'll just see them start falling you wouldn't want to be stood under that as a human the undead guys probably don't care great start let's use hmm should we use an invocation on Melissa with Vlad I feel like Isabella might get jealous, so we'll let Isabella do it. Alright, taking care of those fell bats. They are gone for good. We'll start flying these back to support this engagement soon. We will take down the tower in the meantime. That tower can definitely do damage to the Vargolf. And also potentially Vlad and Isabella if they are stood still. 
so getting rid of that is a good idea. I will start speeding things up because quite simply we're just going to be stood here for a while chomping them down and just keeping them healed up. Oh, did we not destroy that? Oops. We'll just let my Vargas go back and finish it off. Great. Let's start moving in with the Grave Guard at least. Actually, the Crypt Ghouls can also help if they are amongst the Grave Guard. Oh, they're shooting my flying units. That's rude. Uh, they're also building a tower here and a tower over there. Taking out the towers will be important. So we'll fly these over here. Whilst we continue to bash about amongst all the enemies. <laughs> Bargol, that's not the right target. <laughs> she just got smacked on the back of the head. Bargol's having fun though. Surprise, there's much blood left in these zombies and skeletons. I should bring my black coach over here. As soon as that tower is built, we're just going to target it with all of my flying units and take it out. I think the Vargolf is actually going to get a ton of damage done throughout this. Also, there seems to be like more shots coming in from further back. I'm probably going to want to take out this tower. Seems to be able to fire an awful long way. Only trouble getting too close is this guy can cast spells, but I think they're mostly like replenishment spells, so... Should be fine. Right, let's heal up Isabella again. Have Isabella heal up the other vampire. And that's all of the units at the start there finished. Crush the breathers. Carry on. Go through the skeleton warrior in no time. The Vargolf is just <laughs> chewing him up. And spitting him out. Get the black coach in there. And we'll come down on top of the zombies with all of the flyers. Fantastic. Destroy them in no time. It's another unit of skeleton warriors on the way. Oh, that's it. That's victory. Bravo. Gotta go take out enemy leader. Good old Zelig. He's a goner. Great. I decided to get the Grave Guard involved early on because I thought it would speed up the process and it seems to have helped quite a bit. They got 175, 163 kills there. Very nice. Plenty of experience. Let's occupy Waldenhof and then we'll head over to Castle Templehof. We don't have much replenishment to do. Maybe worth jumping out. It's actually... Can we not hit that next turn? It doesn't look like it. It says it buys a little bit more. If I actually jump out, would I then have enough? Hmm, maybe not. Anyway, we don't need all of the replenishment, so we'll just stand as close as we can. Maybe we can get it if I can get some campaign map movement range somewhere. Okay, let's go for Children of the Night. Max that out. Get that plus 30% experience gain early on. Very nice indeed. And also the minus 9% upkeep is absolutely peak. We have our vampire here. I don't think I need to go down the magic line. We're just going to keep her as a melee lord or melee hero. 
So we'll go for Safeguard. And then with Vlad, we will get the Invocation upgrade so that we can do at least one AoE heal. That way he can get away with healing Melissa without actually directly targeting her with an Invocation. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's grab another Felbat. Keep getting those Felbats in there. It may be worth her staying in the settlement for recruitment. Oh, she doesn't need to be in there for recruitment. That's fine then. She can stay outside. Awesome. Let's end the turn. So there's really not much to do, as I mentioned before. Skipping through the turns is definitely something that we're going to be doing. Two factions, it looks like, are already dead. I'm sure many more will fall in the first 50 turns or so. I we'll have to keep an eye on that number. I am very impressed though with how quickly the end turn is done. Uh, so that is the plus five leadership for Direwolves and Felbats done. We need to select a new one. Then we're just going to go for the Master of the Swarm. And we'll just get all these Felbats going. Like extra five melee defense, extra armor, armor piercing weapon damage. We've also got the Miner's Upkeep there. So seems like a good choice. We can also, I assume, this turn, build the vampires. So can I pop them out over here at Eshin? I can. Cool. All right, for the ones in the army, we don't need a character experience gain, although that would get a max out faster. But then this Lawkeeper trait is really nice. Extra Winds of Magic Power Reserve plus one per turn, and also Winds of Magic Power Reserve capacity plus eight. That's very nice. We're going to get her. We can actually recruit quite a lot of these because we have a total cap of five. She's nice. Extra two leadership for all units in the army. We will grab this lady as well. She is aggressive. So an extra 10% weapon strength. She always get, already gets plus 10% from Isabella. So that's perfect. We'll grab those three for Isabella's army. I'm not going to go completely overboard. I don't want like Isabella Doomstack with vampires. Uh, we will still have yes, her fell bats following her around and later on Vargeis and Terrorgeis. But at the start ascended. we're going to at least get four or five in there. We currently have one already in. We're going to put all of these ones in as well. I could also have one that stays outside the army to do the wounds and stuff because I believe that's one way that we get blood kisses anyway these start at rank 4 so we're going to have to quickly level these up we'll start with the ones that are in the army we'll give her impassion get that melee defense up that's a good start and we're going to get the hunger on Vlad very useful <laughs> my shadow magic this I'm night, tempted to actually level up the ready tree in order to get the Pit of Shades. Since everything's bunching up so much when we move in with all our heroes, the Pit of Shades would be incredible. So I'm actually going to do that. We'll grab the Penumbral Pendulum first and we can get the Withering and then we can go Evasion Pit of Shades. Yes. For the other ones we'll just do Replenish Troop Safeguard because we don't need more spirit leech upgrades <laughs> okay right, over to Isabella can she hit this this turn no so we're going to stay in friendly territory and then next turn we can get all of these in the army I guess it kind of works out well because these will all receive experience from the next attack she needs three more spaces she has three more spaces so this has actually works out perfectly let's move on to the next turn I was really hoping we could hit Castle Temple off that turn anyway, but it seems to have worked out regardless. Next turn, we'll obviously take Castle Temple off and then Fort Oberstire, and that should be Temple Hoff destroyed. I don't believe they have a legendary lord I want to care about, so we can safely destroy them. Yes. Okay, first things first, remember so to put the vampires in the army. I ascent. I may also want to mess around with giving them equipment, but I'm not sure we have any equipment yet. Just the Grave Digger. I can actually just give that to... Oh no, that's the one that's actually already assigned, never mind. 
All right. Well, Isabella, go take Castle Temple off, please. It says it's going to be a pair of victory. This is another case of we're going to play it out and it will most definitely not be a pair of victory. Let's jump on in. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to probably go through, I guess, this left-hand side. Of, or actually, we could go through here. There's no towers in our way. There's a big lack of towers there. And we'll come in from this direction. We'll have all of my heroes and lords just go and smack down the gate with the Vargolf. Start deployment, start the battle, and off we go. Speed things up as they run towards the gate. There will, of course, be the towers inside that we're going to want to take care of. Do they have any flyers? I've got some fell bats back there. Let's have all of these come and take out this tower. And we'll also have them take out the enemy fell bats. That way we get a head start on the balance of power. <laughs> Still turned into Vlad this posse. Vlad's just that sexy. It has so many vampires running after him. It's funny because I believe that's even part of his lore that he's not necessarily handsome but Alluring. Do you have access to Penumbral Pendulum now? Which will definitely speed things up quite a bit. Let's run on in. Start smashing them to pieces. Vampire team, go! Oh, well, that's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. So what are the names of these? We've got Isabella, Vlad, Eva Helschnicht, Melissa Ratep, Winifreda von Zürden, and Genevieve von Diel. Nice. Let's get rid of the enemy fell bats. And then we'll go back for this tower that's being built. Seems like a good time for the first penumbral pendulum. Although it's mostly zombies. Did a bit of damage, not as much as I expected. A bit of shades will be so much better. Because we can put it directly over our heroes. And it probably won't do much damage to them. Well, bats are dropping like bats. Awesome. And we'll go ahead and grab the Grave Guard and we'll move them inside. They can start help us chew through the chaff. I don't really want to use my Direwolves in this situation. Direwolves would be great in an open field battle where I can cycle charge them. Also, they'd be great for cleanup. I also for always forget about my Black Coach. The thing is with the Black Coach is I'm not a huge fan of them, so I'll probably do this quite a lot. I'll leave the poor Black Coach behind. Right, we're going to do a uh, good old AoE heal. And this lady is having a hard time against the Strigoi Ghoul King. So we're going to have all of the other ones start attacking him. And hopefully... He'll go down sooner or later. I have my Vargolf get involved as well. Let's just put these into a group. So that we can take care of him. The Strigo Girl King is actually pretty good in melee combat. Oh. We just sent him flying. <laughs> it's probably not a good thing because I really want my lords to be able to attack him. We'll use a spirit leech instead. It's probably more effective. Look at the cool new effect. That is awesome. 
I am. Right, I need to go take out this tower. I completely figure out. Currently just shooting this fell bat to death. Struggling a bit for Winds of Magic. I'm just gonna cycle charge a little bit with my chariot while we're waiting to do the damage here. Not gonna be able to cycle charge that well though. Don't want him to get too deep. Because otherwise he'll just get stuck and die. Uh, it's starting to do a reasonable amount of damage. We've also got the Black Knights now coming in. Isabella's taking a lot of damage. I will heal her up. It's because my... Well, their Lord, sorry, is going for him. Let's have Isabella move out. Right, where else are we being attacked from? This one's back up again. We'll go take that out. Margolf still absolutely pounding these guys. How's the black coach doing on kills? Has reached its first threshold. I'm going to go take out the tower further back. I really need Vlad to take care of the Strigoi Ghoul King. We'll reduce his melee attack. I haven't really been using the Master of Begarment. This guy's been regenerating an absolute ton, though. We can cycle the Master of Begarment since Isabella does have the same ability. Although I should have probably waited until it's finished with Vlad. Oops. As soon, what I'll do is start targeting some of these other units where flyers. Let's go for this zombie units on its own. We can just wipe them out. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Just swarming them. We just break their leadership, they will disintegrate pretty fast. There we go, they're crumbling. And we can just go ahead and do it to any of these other units that are on their own. I think the only one I wouldn't want to do it to is Spearman. Trigger Gold King still going. Vlad, though, also going strong. Oh, she's taking a lot of damage. I want her to stay alive because she is our shadow magic lady. So we'll have her leave. Meanwhile, though, the Graveguard have been doing a great job of just sort of marching forwards and taking care of his unit's on the side. <laughs> you just take the head off that skeleton spearman. <laughs> but it's still going. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. That is amazing. We're gonna use one of these abilities. Get the Master of Bagama going once again. That lord has been tanky. Very tanky indeed. We're being shot by this tower on the left. I'm not too worried about that. 
we're very close to winning. So I'm just going to come in here. And we're going to land on another zombie unit. Swarm them. There we go. Yes. Fine. Vlad von Karstein. Mr. King has no men left. No, nothing around them anymore. So he's no longer safe. And down he goes. Great stuff. That's it. That's victory. Really, really nicely done. I need to get myself some more Winds of Magic though. We did get ourselves a scroll of blast. Interesting. Not really sure if I wanted that. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Would have liked something else, honestly. Decent amount of experience. Let's take Castle Tempelhof. Uh, in these settlements, I actually don't need any recruitment buildings, so we're going to remove these. Nice! Isabella got her mount. Let's go through and level these up. So I do want to get her hunger now so that she can heal herself with combat. I also am tempted to get her abilities up, but if we're going to have the shadow magic on one of my vampires, getting her melee stats up may be better, unless there's good bonuses for like fell bats here. I mean, we can get speed and we can get charge bonus. But that is about it for most of the units. So this Creature of the Night would be good for the long game. And potentially the Carriages of Death as well. I think short term, we can either go and get towards the end one here. Oh, that's Lightning Strike. Oh, that's the one we want. Uncanny Presence. Or is that Prescience? Uh... That's going to give us extra wind magic power reserve minimum and minus percent upkeep with extra campaign movement range. Campaign movement range is like key here for sure. So I think we might go for that. It only requires this one and then that one. And Immortal Horror is also nice because it increases the battle healing cap even more for Isabella. Another 50% on top of the 50% we get from Vlad there. So that would be very nice. I am going to do that then. We'll go for, let's see, Undying Horde. Extra casualty replenishment rate seems like the best choice. Then we can go Immortal Horror. And then next turn we can grab Uncanny Presence or Prescience. All right. Vampire of Death can increase the... Replenishment for Vlad. We will increase his training ability. Isabella. More replenished troops here. We're going to want to put another point for either in the her magic and then Genevieve also replenished troops. Perfect. So we're going to be getting a lot of replenishment <laughs> from these heroes. A Castle Drakenhof did level up, so we do have a couple of slots free. We do have a gold mine here, so yeah, we can get the gold shaft. That's good. What other buildings would be worth having? We can, of course, build the buildings that can unlock new things for us, but it would be better for me to have a Defiled Cairn in either Schwarzhaven or Eschen. I think this one's actually a good idea. Get a gibbet. Gibbet. Which will give us the 250 in the cam generated and the extra control. Nice. Although our control here is fine because the vampiric corruption's at 100. Nice. Is it bowlers looking really strong? Let's move on to the next turn. So not long till we take Fort Obersteyer. They'll probably pop out another army there, so I may have to play it out again to avoid a pyrrhic victory. Because ideally I just want to keep most of my heroes and stuff at full strength until there's a battle that really needs them all. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. 
Be wary, though. For while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Quest battles. Completely forgot. This one actually gives us plus two blood kisses, so that would be worth getting. We also have the Ch Blood Chalice of Bathory here, which gives ward save, casualty replenishment rate for all units in the army, uh, wound recovery time for all characters, and I believe, yeah, she gets crazy good regeneration from the ability. So that's fantastic. We also get the 5,000 dark magic, which would be useful. Let's read the description. While on one of her forays of bloodletting, Isabella happens upon an unrivaled prize. Torn from one of the corpses of a recently slaughtered beastman is a horn thick with pestilent blood, emanating a ghastly aura. A ruinous gift from the Chaos Gods themselves. To simply drink deep of its blighted fluids would surely end Isabella's unlife. Fortunately, a rite can purge the blood of its lethal taint, rendering the dark powers of chaos hers to consume, but it requires the defilement of a legendary warrior's resting place. Who better than Marbad, first of the elect accounts, ancient hero to fools of the Empire? The innumerable zealots who guard it are all that stand between Count Countess of Sylvania and power beyond all imagining. So a quest battle, which we can probably do sooner than later. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we'll take Fort Oberstire. I will also go through the Blood Kiss mechanic because I actually haven't looked at it yet. Uh, so we'll have a look at all of this. And then we'll just carry on with our next target. we just got to decide who it's going to be. That's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you join me in episode two. Make sure to like and subscribe, of course, if you did enjoy the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.